Hey guys, this is Rob Brown with the Rob Report. Once again, this is Rob with the Rob Report. Here another CNN. CNN. CNN is on it today. CNN says Trump and Obama tied for the most admired men in the United States this year. Michelle Obama is the most admired woman. So you're trying to tell me, this is according to Gallup Report, that after dumping on this man from day one, trying to get any kind of criminal charge you can get this man on, trying to trump up charges on this guy with the PP dossier and all that kind of stuff, with, you know, with Carter Page and you know Fusion GPS, you're coming up with this fake Russia, you're coming up with this old uh, Trump got this by hook or crook theory. When it's really you trying to get Trump out of office by hooking Trump. The point is, you guys just can't really face the fact that that man won fair and square, beat your China, beat your inevitable, the, your crown and glory, supposed to be your crown and glory, the woman who were destined to be president, that this man who was a joke whom her husband inspired to run for office just to make her look good in a landslide defeat, got whooped. Trump did everything. I believe Trump really didn't want to be president. I don't believe he wanted one cent. I believe his time to really want to be president was to beat Obama. I don't think he really wanted to beat his friend Hillary Clinton. I believe all this stuff was made up because he figured he can get a good tour, a good book, maybe his TV um, channel out of this deal. And he said, hey, let's do it. I'm going to do whatever I can to make myself look stupid so you can beat me in a landslide and it backfired. And to me, it's hilarious. And um, that's why I said both of these crooks shouldn't have, shouldn't have been running. I don't know what's up with the Department of Justice. I don't know what's up with our FBI. Anytime somebody is being prosecuted or being investigated, they should be told to step down. Hillary Clinton was being investigated. Trump was being investigated. Both of them should have been told to step down and let those who are not being investigated step up and run. But no, they didn't want to do that because that means Bernie Sanders would have had an open door to win an election. Now, here's the deal. This is funny. After two years of dumping on this dude, crapping on this dude, and believe me, he is a horrible politician in my book. His policies, I think one of his biggest mistakes, I'm glad he got rid of um, some of these people, I'm glad he fired a lot of people that was running, running with him. I really do. I think he's much more better without them. Not saying he's better. Not saying he's great. <laughs> but he's much more a better president when he didn't have um, uh, your boy from um, when he got rid of Mike Pompeo, when he got rid of Steve Bannon. Uh, when he got rid of Rand Spiebert, previous, previous, whatever his name is, when he got rid of a whole bunch of people, he he's a little a little more saner. He could be far worse than he is right now. Believe me. I mean, I'm praying every day that the wrong person don't get in his ears and really have him do something stupid. Now, don't mean he's a good president. In all that, the. Democrats will find some way to undermine this guy in his position as president. But then again, that happens in every president. When Obama was president, the Republicans was trying to undermine his position too. And Obama didn't know how to use that to his advantage to win the House and Senate back. And as a result of that, in 2016, we lost it all. Presidential, House, <laughs> and the Senate lost it all. Because Obama didn't know how to stand up and help people win elections. He knew how to help himself. But anyway, I'm getting off subject and I don't have much time on my phone. After all this time, even after you come up with some of the dumbest charges to try to um, pro uh, impeach this guy on, all because he wanted to look into possible criminality or possible abuse of power, Joe Biden, which he have every right to look into, whether he's an opponent or not, you guys going to try to dump on this guy. You're going to try to get him out of office. And you're halfway there. You impeached him on some of the dumbest non-stickable charges ever. There's a bunch of charges you can get this guy on. 
There's a bunch of charges you can get this guy on. Give me a moment. There's a bunch of charges you can get this guy on. And um, you refuse to go that way. Like I said, the Democratic Party, they're like, that, they're like the cop that I'll arrest you on anything I can arrest you on. That could probably get you to break your probation and send you to jail for a year or two. Or maybe six months or three months. Versus going for the information the informant gave you where all the dope is and getting them on charges that's going to stick for years, for decades. Like the Monument Clause and abuse of power in other areas. Well, let's look at this. Trump admired, um, <laughs> even after impeachment, he's just as popular as our beloved Obama. The current and former president and their first ladies are the most admired people in the U.S. according to New Gallup poll. Analytic companies poll more than 1,000 Americans about the men and women they most admired in the world. The men. President Donald Trump and former President Barack Obama each scored votes from 18% of U.S. adults sharing the spot for the most widely admired men of the year. Now you gave this guy something to brag about. They said I'm just as popular as Obama. You know, he was trying to do everything Obama did or undo everything Obama did. The good things he wanted to do better than Obama. The bad things he felt was bad, he wanted to overturn it, which was good for us. He wanted to overturn it. He wanted the Nobel Peace Prize, working with um, North Korea. This year marked Obama's 12th time as the most admired man in the United States, Gallup reported. Tied for third place with former President Jimmy Carter, who in my book is still the most admired man out of all of them, and Tesla CEO Elon Musk, followed by Microsoft founder Bill Gates, Pope Francis, Senator Bernie Sanders, House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff, the Dalai Lama, and billionaire investor Warren Buffett rounded up top ten. And here you go. Obama and Trump is more admired, according to this poll, and Senator Bernie Sanders. That's something. That is something. I know y'all saying this poll is screwed. Probably something. <laughs> the women, the former and current first ladies of the United States, nabbed the top two spots for the most admired women. Former First Lady Michelle Obama received 10% of the votes, followed by First Lady Melania Trump named by 5% of responders. The climate activist Greta Thunberg, at only 16 years old, cracked the top five along with Oprah Renfe and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. So here you got a teenager being most, most admired more than Oprah Winfrey. I, sometimes I consider her like a black mammy type of person. You know, she's that mother in the um, plantation that liked to nurture uh, the white babies more than she nurtured the black babies. You know, have you seen her relationship with Weinstead uh, and the accusers of Michael Jackson and all that? She rather nurse them than, let me stop. For the second year in a row, Obama stole the top spot from Clinton, who finished tw first 22 times over 25 years. The results reflect political divisions. The vote for the top admired men were divided among party line, 41% Democrat, chose Obama, 45 Republican chose Trump. Few voted for the other party's candidate. The split between parties in the poll reflect the same divide in politics according to Gallup. The next two finishers, Carter and Musk, each earned only 2% of the vote and a deep decline from the votes of Obama and Trump earned. Obama's 12th straight spot at the top indicates his post-presidency popularity. The only other president the share this popularity in the poll was Dwight Eisenhower, who won twice after leaving office in the late 1960s. And yeah, and if Obama put his mouth on this impeachment thing, Trump basically going to get riled up even more, and he's going to lose, and Trump going to end up beating him in popularity. Is this what you guys want with this foolishness? Would this get him by any means necessary foolishness instead of leaving it alone and let the people get him out at the polls? And then go from there. This is foolishness. And the people who are out here really trying to put out policies that's going to help working people are down at the bottom of the list. A.K.A. 
Bernie Sanders, aka Jimmy Carter. And I don't see too many other black people on this list that's out here helping the community, and there's a lot of a lot of them out there. Let me let me keep going. Alright, so that's the end of that article, man. I'm done. Here it is. It's three years in the Trump election. From day one, they've been crapping on this dude and trying to get him by any means necessary. And we said that if you keep going down this road, you're going you're gonna to drum up his base. You're going to even turn some Democrats that's on the border fronts toward his way. You're going to turn independents toward his way with this foolishness. And I say, if you mess around, and you on purpose screw Bernie Sanders, who for a lot of people, in their mind, they consider a person that's going to do something for them based on his policies. And you put in somebody who has nothing in place that's going to do something for them with policy based on policies because they don't have none. Then what you're going to have is another Trump re-election. Trump popularity going to soar past Barack Obama. And it will be nobody's fault but the Democratic Party in general. I'm telling you, you guys need to stop this mess. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Let's get them at the polls. I don't like neither one of these people running on the top ticket. None of these people are offering anything for my community. Therefore, when it comes to all of them, Democrat and Republican, I'm out. Y'all do what y'all want to do. I'm out. I have not picked anybody and I'm not picking nobody until they spend time with my community and let my community tell them their needs and I want to see them go out there and advocate those needs for my community. Don't be brushing off and running away and, and not taking a policy that we want implemented in your, your present, presidency. That's going to be an easy no to you when you do that. We're not forced to vote for you. And nobody, I don't care what, um, whether you got your political savers or not, you can get mad all you want. We're not going to vote for that so-called political savior if he's not going to do nothing for our people. Now, back on the Democratic Party. You brought this on yourself. You got enough Trump voters out there. You got enough Trump voters out there. Somebody trying to text me. You got enough Trump voters out there trying their best you got um, that will get riled up and they're going to get their base out for a vote. What you're going to do is you're going to crap on your base because you do it. Trump is not crapping on his base. He already got a solid base and he's telling the people that may be on the fence about him in the Republican Party to step up. And as a result of what you Democrats do, you're going to lose a lot of independence. Independence is going to shift over to Trump. Trump going to win again in a landslide because of your foolishness. Stop it.